Cleaners have found the spot. I can't see the leopard. Can you? Ah, oh, he's in the tree. So a hyena's forced him up the tree and he is feeding. Oh, that is, looks like a very delicate Feeding up in the tree. Standing by. Firm, yeah, he's uh, up the tree. I'm he's arrived and he's feeding at the moment. Just me, you're more than welcome to come in. Copy that. Hey guys, I'm just going to try to get us in the best position to see what he's up to. Uh, hyena is coming to have a look. It looks like the, the stomach's just hanging there. And I, I don't know, those of you who've watched with me, uh, with me here a while ago, the first time I, look, I love it, he snarls at the leopard from the tree. I mean, snarls at the hyena from up in the tree. So we're going to take a little spot next to the hyena here. You can see that the stomach actually hanging down by a very loose thread. sure when that falls, the hyena has now positioned itself very well to pick up any scraps. You can see what it looks like he's doing there is he, he's taking um, pieces of fur off. They'll try to remove as much fur as possible from the from the carcass. There you saw a bit of it fall down, float down um, before they go eat the meat. Unfortunately they do, for them they do swallow quite a bit of meat so they do have hairballs and their feces has got quite a lot of hair in it. Because they are not able to digest keratin which is what the hair and fur is made of. Unbelievable how patient hyenas are. Um, the first time I ever I ever found uh, Konyuma, which is quite recently after I started here, um, and he was also the first leopard I found tracking on foot, and um, he killed a bush buck in the in, in a drainage line, and um, there was a female hyena who waited three full days underneath that carcass just waiting for bones and bits there we are we can see now we're wondering whether it was a male or female stembok we now know it's a male just moving into a more comfortable position but we'll just have to move for a better view Good evening, Sharon. 
Sharon would like to know the weight difference um, between a leopard and a hyena. Um, it can vary quite a lot depending on the area, um, but generally a male leopard will be quite a similar weight to a large hyena. Um, anything from sort of uh, 80 kilo, oh sorry, about 75 kilograms up to 90 kilograms. Um, but a female leopard would be quite significantly smaller, probably about 20 kilograms, uh, 20 to 30 kilograms lighter than a big hyena. As you can see now we've got a nice view of him plucking. So he's just using those front front teeth there to just pluck the fur before so he can get to the meat. It's amazing if you have a look at those claws. Um, you can see how how a, a, that cat's claws work there. So they are fully extended now he's holding the the stand box head in place so those claws will actually go back in when when not needed and not used there we go you can see all the the fur standing by F um, you can make your way, it's only myself here, and then Sean is also going to be moving into this area. Oh, uh, Firm, just take that enclosure that runs from Quarantine down to Tundan uh, to the south of Inga's Kaya. Oh, and we are to yeah, the north, directly to the north of Inga's Kaya itself. Yeah, the bones crushing there as he's breaking through the whole nasal cavity. There we go. Nose is gone. And now he's going to try break into the, the, the cranial cavity where the brain is. There's a high protein there, so it'll be quite a good meal for him. And they're not able to do this on bigger animals because they're not they're not as powerful in the jaws as lion and, and, and hyena. afternoon to Jackie's 8th grade class. They would like to know which leopard is this and what is he eating. This is a Kunyuma. He's a young male leopard and he is eating a male standbok and there's very very little of it left. Um, so he's nearly completely finished the whole thing and what he's doing at the moment is he's trying to, to break open the skull uh, to get uh, to the brain which is a very high protein source for an animal so um, it's very good for him to eat. As you see he's quite careful not to get those horns in his mouth because those are very sharp and could definitely do him some damage. And also we can't see him now because we're watching the leopard but there's also a hyena waiting under the tree just waiting for the leopard to drop any bits of bone and whatnot that it's going to be able to scavenge. Looks like he's going to take off the ear. It's 
County Watt. Let's see here. These had something. No. What? The end of the hyena on its way? What we can't see from here. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Guru Raj. Um, welcome on Drive with us this afternoon. Uh, Guru Raj would like to know when do leopards normally hunt? Well, Guru Raj, um, they prefer to hunt during the cooler times of the day and, and at night. Um, but being opportunists, um, they will hunt any time of the day if an opportunity presents itself to them. But generally, they tend to hunt um, from late afternoon into early evening and throughout the night and then again into the early morning with a definite slowdown of activity during the warmer the warmer parts of the day. You can see he's managed to break through the, the cranial cavity there now. You can see the horns are not staying in one place, they're loose. So he's actually cracked the bone at the, the main uh, part of the cranium, the skull. And you can see there, and he's gotten, he's probably got quite a bit of the, the brains out already. Stomach Generally not, no, you won't eat the stomach contents, that's just grass. Okay. And I either heard something for so it's just coming to have a sniff. It didn't look like something very big to me. You know, the hyena's got a small bone and managed to, to pick up that he would have dropped. Amazing to hear that crunching. Go ahead. Good evening, Bob from Iowa. Bob would like to know which of Karula's boys is the oldest. Bob, I think you must be refer I hope I think you're referring to the current litter. Uh, they would be the same age, Bob. They're, they're litter mates, and without actually being witness to the birth, it's very difficult um, to to 
know who, who, who was born first. Um, but they're probably they're, they're the same age. They're but if we had to go back into uh, Kruna's previous letters, I'm sure there are males that are, are much older than these two. You can see how he's every now and then when you lift again, let's have a closer look. You can actually see he's got the eye out and eaten the eye as well, and the eye socket's completely empty. So it's very unlikely that uh, Kanyuma is going to be here tomorrow. He's literally eaten the whole stem book. He might be a little bit left on the one leg, but he's just finished the skull. And there's very little left on it now. Standing by. There we go, the hyena just heard something drop again, rushed in from sleeping to nothing in a matter of seconds. Good evening, Elizabeth. Welcome on drive with us this evening. Elizabeth would like to know, would the hyena eat the stomach if it fell? Um, it might try eat the stomach lining. Um, and I've only, I mean, hyenas might. I, I have seen them leave it completely before. I've also seen them eat it. It also just depends on how hungry this particular hyena is. I'm just going to go forward a, a fraction so you can actually see the hyena. Obviously, as we move, um, the hyena's gone back to the same spot it was lying down. But if something else drops, we're in a good position to see what happens now. So if we're lucky, um, when he's finished, munching on what's very little left of this stembok carcass he might move down towards the dam just to have a drink So for those of you who are new and, and might have joined us late on this drive this evening, just to remind you that we are live 
um, from between Juma and Arethusa private game reserves in the Sabi Sands of South Africa. Barring a few seconds of streaming over the internet, you are seeing exactly what I am seeing with my two eyes from all over the world. Oh, we can hear elephants arguing about something in the background. I imagine the ears taste too good. Not much meat in them, they're all gristle. I suppose all the protein counts. You can even hear that crunch, 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 and he's eating the ear. And here comes the hyena, tiny little bone dropped. And that hyena was up in a flash. That's incredible. That bone must not even have been much bigger than my, my baby finger. But it's behind you, silly. Use your nose, you've walked past it. Here we go. Left, left. There goes one ear, and there goes the next ear. You can hear how grisly, I mean the ear is almost all gristle, there's very little meat in it. So that's just the neck there. A little bit of the neck, no I don't think that's the neck, we'll see now. I'm sure yeah it is a little bit there. of the neck. Yeah, you can see how I was saying using his teeth to remove um, the fur before he starts easing. Another piece dropped, very small again. So Remy and a few other people uh, are wondering, did he eat the horns? Uh, no, those two things that fell that set the hyena off running in, uh, I th those were both the horns that fell then. Yep, the hyena just picked up a horn. But uh, I can't taste very nice. It's amazing on these smaller animals that how they can almost devour the entire thing. Go ahead.
So even though this might be quite gruesome, watching a male leopard eat through the skull cavity of a, a small Stenbock, it is nature. Um, and, it, and an animal like a leopard wouldn't be able to survive unless it, it did kill um, other animals. I mean, they are protein eaters and meat eaters, and they also help um, with keeping the other animals healthy. So as soon as there's a sick or injured or old, um, they'll get preyed on by one of the predators. And the same goes around for the leopard. As soon as lep a leopard gets old, um, he's either going to be killed by another leopard or by hyenas or by lions or even by buffalo or, or elephant. It, it's just the way life is. Sometimes um, we try to sort of distance ourselves and desensitize ourselves from from nature and certain uh, sort of feel-good movies, uh, cartoon movies about animals sometimes give us the wrong idea about what actually happens out here. It is a, it is, it is gruesome, but it is life. Now he's getting into the leg there, and um, what he's doing is cracking open the leg to get to the marrow on the inside of the bone. Go ahead. Oh, and that looks like the last of it. Even though sometimes he might swallow the, the hooves, he's not going to be able to digest them. Quite often, cough them up or vomit them up later. <laughs> and then funny look after <laughs> swallowing the, the hooves. Um, sorry, Gail. I. Gail asked us a question, how, how many hyenas are waiting um, for pieces of his kill? Um, Gail, there's only one at the moment. <laughs> He's eating a piece of skin. Oh, that's the other leg. You should hear that crunching as it goes through to try to get the marrow out of the bone again. Go ahead. Good evening, Lenny from Washington. Lenny would like to know whether big cats have taste preferences for different animals. Um, it's very difficult to say, but I definitely say. Um, certain of the big cats have a, a I suppose it's a taste preference um, I'm not sure whether it's a taste preference or whether the species is most abundant or easiest to catch and that's the quite difficult thing but in certain areas um, lions will hunt buffalo in certain areas they won't um, in certain areas um, leopards uh, will hunt quite a few different antelope and in some other areas they won't. I, I think a lot of it's got to do with um, availability of prey rather than a taste preference. Although saying that, um, I've seen lions with, which will bypass impala and zebra and all sorts and only go for um, really big animals, hippo, buffalo, elephant, giraffe and warthog. So I thought initially we Maybe it's possibly the prey size, so they can catch a big thing, can feed them all for a long time. 
Um, but then they had this thing that always went for water, but they would walk past that. Oh, that's going to be very smelly for us down here now. You can see he's just opened the, the stomach. Um, that smell is going to drift towards us now. So he's eating the sinew or trying to eat the sinew on the side without getting the stomach content in his mouth. But doesn't seem to be doing the best job of it at the moment. So back to your question. So I, I'm not sure. I, I, I generally think most animals will, will take pre, uh, prey on preference due to size and availability rather than rather than taste. Um, but you never know. I might be completely wrong. So the hyena is getting confused, so bits of um, half digested grass are falling out and the hyena keeps thinking it's food. Well, having the inside of an animal's stomach fall on a hyena, fortunately for hyena it definitely, might actually improve their general smell. He's more... is getting a semi-digested grass shower. There we go, you can see he must have been quite hungry. Um, and quite often leopards will sometimes leave the stomach lining unless they are hungry, but he obviously was quite hungry, so he's actually eaten uh, the a lot of the stomach lining. I think no, the wind's in yeah. our favor. <laughs> Negative. Um, I cannot move their vehicles blocking me in. Emerald Kunuma did not leave much for the hyena. So as it's getting cooler and a bit dark now, and there's no meat left as such, um, I see him cleaning his, his face and his paws. Um, there's a strong possibility he might come down the tree and make his way towards the, the Juma waterhole, which is not too far from here.
Go ahead. Good evening, Teresa on Twitter. Teresa would like to know if the prey meat might taste different depending on what they eat. Oh, just so I'll be back with your question now. The hyena has now decided to depart. You can see there's no food left. It's going to go forage elsewhere. Um, so I'm, I, I guess it's possible depending on what they eat uh, and depending on the area they're in, Teresa. And whether the meat tastes different. I mean, if we think about beef, beef from different areas and, and fed differently definitely tastes different. So I, 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 it, it's definitely possible. amazing you can see he's taking his time to clean um, he might actually come down by the looks of things now so we're in the perfect spot he's going to come down right next to us so he's literally probably three meters from where Andrew and I are sitting now waited for the hyena to leave and there's a strong possibility he might move towards the dam you can see he just turns around checks making sure the hyena didn't come back though he likes to fight hyenas from time to time I've seen him <laughs> sneak up and bite and scratch a hyena on the bottom before just for good fun which is a uh, quite a positive sign um, for him as a young male leopard it means when he gets older you'll have quite a bit of aggression not all male leopards will take on a hyena um, but if he's already taken them on at this age there's there's a possibility he's probably going to be able to get himself a very um, a, ver a really good territory when he gets older And just as I predicted, it looks like he might head straight towards the dam. He's just checking out where the hyena went from. He could also just lie down there. Go ahead. Good evening, Anne from Durban. Anne would like to know, um, does Kunyun know exactly where the water is or can he smell it? I would think he knows exactly where this water is. He spent a lot of time um, and grew up um, in this area, specifically when he was a young cub. He was quite often stored in the drainage line around there. No problem. I'm gonna stay with him. 
No problem, have fun, boy. Thank you. What were you narrating? Enjoy. Sorry? What were you narrating? And um, we're live. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, on the online? Or? The, on, on the Nat Geo website. Um, www.wildsafari.com. Uh, What's it? Wildsafarilive.com. Yeah, I'm just going to Google and type Wild Safari. It'll come up yeah. Alright, so enjoy, guys. We're going to try to keep up with the leopard. Right. Now you can yeah. smell that, um, <laughs> that, that smell of that, uh, the, the stomach contents. Um, if you can just tell him a little bit, sorry, www.wildearth.tv. Come on, for. Okay, I've lost sight of him now while we we're having a quick chat there. There he is. He's heading straight um, for the water, like we predicted. Hi, uh, Quibbus, it's Brent here. Yeah? I'm still with uh, Kunyuma. He's now mobile uh, northwest towards um, Weir Teledam. He is mobile towards Dari Dam. Right, www.wildearth.tv I think he's gonna head for the water. He's just finished eating. He's got a quite a bit of stomach content in his mouth. And I, even for a leopard who can eat completely rotten meat, I doubt that semi-digested uh, semi grass is gonna be a, a big favorite for him. So I'm quite sure he'd like to go wash, wash some of the out of his mouth with a nice long drink. I'm just gonna try to jump up around in the air. disappeared to. There he is. Stopping for ablutions. No matter what, I, I love the colours of this time of the year with the changing bush willows. They just seem to match so well with them. Especially with that leopard. It's gonna loop around the next thicket.
is definitely not in a hurry to get down to the water. He's taking a very casual stroll. Which side of the bush is going to pop out? Left or right? You got him then, hiding behind there. Yeah, he's there. Can we afford a bit? I think he may be walking on this. So even though he's just fed, he is an opportunist. So he just scouted ahead, having a quick look to make sure there wasn't a possible meal out there. Go wide. Isn't that stunning, that sky, male leopard. So, guys, it's been an absolutely wonderful, wonderful afternoon. I'm so glad I could, I was able to share it with you. Um, and we've been very lucky, and for me, I'm very lucky. I got to spend some time with my favorite leopard in the area. Um, and it was nice, we got to do some different stuff. We saw some birds, did some trees. Um, saw a really nice bird that I actually personally haven't seen at Juma yet. Um, which is uh, the Koki Franklin. So that, that was very nice. And um, just all in all, a great day. I'd like to say thanks to the whole whole world, whoever's out there watching. It's been great to taking you guys on drive. Uh, and we can't wait to do it again tomorrow morning. Uh, and from all of us here at Wild Earth, I hope you have a fantastic evening or morning wherever you are in the world.